What we're talking about today is um, angles in standard position, okay? And this, this is going to be different for you and how we draw angles in standard position. So make sure you take good notes and ask questions if you have them. So, what we're talking about. This is your typical Cartesian plane. We're used to seeing it, you know, with X and Y um, axes. But in, in the case when we're drawing angles, we actually label the sides based on where we start from. And the initial side is where all angles begin from in standard position. So at this particular spot, we're at zero. When we move up to this one, we're at 90. Obviously, each one of these is 90 degrees, and then we come back and we're at 360. So 360 degrees and zero in terms of angles and standard position are actually very, very similar. Okay, so the next thing we need to know is that positive angles always start at zero, and they rotate counterclockwise, so they go this way. Okay. They rotate in a counterclockwise fashion. And, in, and the way you think about it is that if you know our quadrants one, two, three, four, they kind of rotate in that counterclockwise fashion. And it, it'll start from here and rotate around to whatever our angle is that we need. We're going to look at 120 degrees. And I'm going to draw this one, so pay close attention to this. Um, so we start here at the initial side, and you pick some spot on that side somewhere, okay? Now, and what you do is you, you draw kind of a circle until you get to where you need to be. And I probably went too far because I needed to go just 30 past because if I go up to here, I'm at 90, and then I need another 30, so it's probably going to be right about there, okay? And then what you do is when you land on that spot where you feel like you need to be, is you draw a, what's called a terminal side, okay? And then you put a little arrow on that circle piece, and then you label your angle. And I'm, I, on the next slide, I have it done a lot nicer than this. Um, but that's how you draw an angle in standard position. This is the initial side. This is called the terminal side. And uh, this just reflects how far you go, and then you have to label it. Okay, so here's what it looks like a little cleaner. Okay. And all angles always start from the initial side. And for the most part, you're going to make an approximation. You needed to go another 30 degrees past 90 to get to 120. All right. This terminal side should have an arrowhead on it, just like this curve should have an arrowhead on it. And that's how you draw an angle in standard position. Now, angles don't always have to be positive. I can have negative angles. And instead of going clockwise or counterclockwise like this, they go the other direction. So they go clockwise. Okay. So for example, Let's look at negative 80. Right. So in this case, it's not going to quite make it to 270 because that would be negative 90. Right. 90 degrees will always take me to the next axis. Right. So what I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to start my little curve. Oops. Start my little curve and go almost... To 90 degrees. Put an arrowhead on it, draw a terminal side, and label it like that. Okay, now I expect you to get it close. I'm not asking you to put a compass or anything on there to get it close. It should be negative 80. Sorry. Question Cleaner looking version of it. Okay, so negative 80. Um, so the question, does it matter where you start on the initial side? It just needs to be somewhere away from the origin. Okay. okay. Now, I, I put this one closer inside just because I didn't want it on top of this one. Okay. 
And that's how you draw an angle of standard position. Now, one of the things that we're going to talk about is how to draw different types of angles and how to represent them in different ways. Because every angle has more than one possibility to land on the terminal side. Okay, and, and I'll show you what I mean here in a sec. Any other questions? So, the other thing that we need to know is you can draw angles larger than 360 degrees. All right. In theory, if I start here and go all the way around, that's 360 degrees. So if I just kept going, it would be bigger than 360. So let's look at an example like this, 560. All right. So if I start here and I go around and I go around one time, that's 360. So I need another how many degrees to get to 560? 200. 200. So if I keep going, there's 180. So how much further do I need to go? 20. Another 20. Okay. If I were to draw, this angle would be 560 degrees. So when you draw an angle that's bigger than 360, you just go around again. And here's a clean version of that. Okay. And so obviously I could just keep going and going and going. The, the key thing here is this angle 560 is coterminal with this angle right here. So what, how much is that angle in red? 200 degrees. Okay, so it, 200 and 560 are coterminal with each other. Right? The other thing I could do is I could go the other way. So this red angle here is 200. What's that blue angle? It's got to be negative. Negative 160. Oops. Do we have to like write that? Yes, because we're that's one of the things you're gonna have to do. Alright, negative 160. So there's a couple ways to come up with that negative 160. Alright. You could go, all right, here's 90, negative 90, and then I, I go up to this side, which was we already figured out was 20 short of 180 here. 20 more, depending on which direction you were going. Okay. So we could subtract that. Um, the other thing you could do is we talked about how this is 180 and we were, uh, so you would subtract the 20 from there. You could look at this angle here and think, all right, this is 70 degrees from 270 from this part because we were 20 short and this is 90. So there's a couple ways to look at it. All right, so one of the things that you're going to have to do is come up with other angles that are coterminal with angles. And so... We've already talked about two of them. We've talked about two angles that are coterminal. 200 degrees and negative 160 degrees. Okay? Can you come up with another one? Well, we just got them on the page before. What's the relationship between 200 and... 560. How far off are they? 360 degrees. All right? Because that's one full rotation. If I subtract 360 from 560, I get 200. What happens if I subtract 360 from 200? Negative 200 minus 360. Minus 160. Okay, so I could come up with other angles. I could subtract another 360, right? What if I wanted to go bigger than 560? What could I do? Uh, Add 360. Basically, all we're doing is looking at other rotations around. So here are other coterminal angles, okay? So this is if I added 360, if I added another 360, if I subtracted another 360 from here, Okay, so if you keep adding and subtracting 360s from 560, you're going to get coterminal angles. Okay, that's the key. It's just a matter of going around again, either clockwise or counterclockwise. And going around again means 
adding or subtracting 360 degrees. Are there any questions about that? Now, we've talked about degree mode and wanting your calculator to be in degree mode versus radians. We're going to learn what radians are today. And it's just another way to measure angles. You think about when you measure distances or lengths of something. We have lots of different units. You see it all the time. Feet, centimeters, inches, miles, whatever. They all mean a different linear measurement. Okay. There are actually three total ways to measure degrees. Measure an angle, sorry. To measure an angle. One of them is degrees. That's the one you're most familiar with. Another one is radians, which we're going to learn about today. And the third one is called gradients, which we won't deal with at all. So here's what you need to know about radians. And we're going to do some conversions. 180 degrees equals pi radians. Radians are generally measured in terms of pi. So if I know that 180 degrees is pi radians, what's 360 degrees? Two, two pi radians, right. Important. So halfway around is pi. All the way around is two pi radians. Now, why I put these up here is to show you where the conversions come from. If I'm trying to convert, I need to know how many degrees is one, or how many radians is one degree. So all I did here is I divided both sides by 180. So one degree equals pi over 180 radians. And this is going to come into play when we're converting degrees to radians. And in some of the SARA app, you're asked to do this. So here's how that version looks. So if you convert from degrees to radians, multiply the degrees by pi over 180. So yeah, you can leave your calculator in degree mode. It's not a big deal. The only time that you will need it in radian mode is if you're taking a trig function of an angle in radians. So for example, sine of 90 degrees, you plug that in your calculator, you get something. If it, if it was given to us as pi over 2 instead of 90 degrees, and you wanted to find sine of pi over 2, then you would need to be in radian mode. For the most part, that's not going to come into play in this course. All you do is take the degrees and multiply by that in your calculator? Yep. Uh, no, you, won't, you mostly won't use your calculator for this. Okay. That's the first part. Now, the second part is going the other direction. So here, I'm going to get it, divide both sides by 2 pi to get 1 radian. So 1 radian is 180 over pi degrees. So if I'm converting from radians to degrees, now what you do, instead of multiplying by pi over 180, you multiply by 180 over pi. Since radians are often in pi form, with the pi down on the bottom, it will cancel it out to get us back to just numbers. When we're trying to go from degrees to radians, notice the pi on top, the numbers are going to cancel and you're going to be left with the pi. Before we do some conversions, I want to show you something that's in your book. It's on page 1798. But as, as you look at, this is called the unit circle. Okay, we start here and move around to different degrees. All right, there's some common ones that we see, 30, 45, 60, 90. So here you have the degrees on the inside. You have the radians on the outside that go with it. So anytime you ever have 90 degrees, you know it's pi over 2. 180 is pi. 3 pi over 2 is 270. And 0 or 2 pi are coterminal, but 360 and 2 pi are the same. Obviously, 0 is 0. As, as you increase and you see some common, notice we've got denominators of 
3, 4, and 6, those are related to the 30, 45, and 60 degree angles and how they relate. I'm not going to ask you to memorize these, but you should get to the point where you start feeling comfortable knowing that 30 degrees is pi over 6, 45 degrees is pi over 4, 60 degrees is pi over 3. Okay. Now let's do some actual conversions. So what I want you to do is convert them from degrees to radians or radians to degrees. So how do you know, right? Like this one, it's easy to tell if it's in degrees because there's going to be a degree symbol, all right? There's no degree symbol over here. The pi itself does not, is not the giveaway, okay? But, but the giveaway is that there's no degrees, which means this is radians. Most of the time, radians will come with a pi in it. Not always, though. So that's really important. So go ahead and convert this one. Don't worry about B yet. Let's do A first. What am I going to have to do to convert this to radians? Correct. I have to multiply by pi over 80. So again, this is degrees to radians. So I just say negative 30 times pi over 180. All right. Now, if you can, I would encourage you not to use the calculator for this. Because this is like negative 30 over 1. So I can do some canceling with negative 30 and 180. What kind of canceling can I do? I can do the zero, sure. Okay, what else? How about the 3 and the 18? 6. 6. Okay, so 3 goes, that becomes 6. So what do I have here? 6 pi. Pi negative 1. Negative 6 pi. Nope. Pi negative, negative pi over 6. That's so much easier to do without a calculator, in my opinion. Okay? Of course. Now, there's one other thing. Okay, so here it is looking a little cleaner. It's negative pi over 6 radians. Put the label on there. Get in the habit of putting the label on there because this is new. I know up here we didn't put it. It doesn't say radians. But for now, I want you to put it because I want you to get used to the idea of a different way to measure angles. Okay. Now, on this one, I'm going to convert from radians to degrees. So what am I going to do in order to do that? Exactly. Multiply by 180 over pi. Here's the thing that's nice about this, and what should happen if radians are, already have a pi in it. Those, those pi's should cancel out so that my final answer is not going to have pi in it. All right? How about uh, 2 and 180? What can I do with that? Make that just a 90. So what am I left with? What's my answer? 450. 450. Okay. That's all there is to it. It is. So, you're, so today what you're doing is you're drawing angles in standard position. You're going to be naming coterminal angles with a given angle, and you're going to be converting from degrees to radians and radians to degrees. Okay? Any questions about any of that?